All right, we are broadcasting again today, May 16th, 2018, St. Charles, Missouri. My name is Missionary Norman at Kerr, O-E-T-K-E-R, founder and director of LAM, Light of Mitz Among Christian Outreach, 1975, we incorporated a non-for-profit. One statement on our corporation papers, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus. We believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible, Old and New Testament, is the only divine inspired word from God to all of humanity. And the New Testament, the Old Testament is a historical record, the New Testament is the only rule and guide for all spiritually born again followers of Jesus to obey. There are absolutely no current church doctrines that are divinely inspired by God, no matter how goody-goody they sound to you. There's no Pope, <laughs> no Blessed Virgin, no, no, uh, no other prophets, Nothing underneath the rocks, no dreams. All others, all other religions are bought by another religious force, and we know who that is. It's an anti Christ force. All Protestant denominational doctrines based in anti Christ thought. Okay. Antichrist. You go to a Christian church today, you're probably involved in an antichrist church. A Christ centered church is a church that actually does what Jesus, the apostle and evangelist, say in the New Testament. You're doing your nine to five job. Going to that church on Sunday morning, being a Sunday school teacher, Bible college student, whatever, you're part of the Antichrist movement. You're just a religion. You're no different from anyone else out there as far as a religion. No different from a Mormon Jehovah Witness. They all believe in something. The Antichrist Protestant Christian denominations today are Antichrist for the most part. They are anti against the plain teachings of Jesus in the New Testament. Or they pick and choose what religion they'll make the New Testament. Hear me? Make. They will make it what they want. You don't like it, hit the door, Jack. All right. India, you awake out there? 8.30 at night out there for you guys in India. So it's going to be your, uh, what's today? Wednesday. Matthew 4.19. We're talking about grace, justification, and repentance. How to become a Christian. In the New Testament book of Matthew, listen, Jesus, and he said unto them, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. What do you think that means? Are you going to give you a fishing net and you're going to go out there and fish in some river or stream? Do you think of fishermen today, or as you know it, no matter what part of the world you're in, you think a fisherman goes out in his boat and leaves that net set in the boat and goes out there every day and sits there for eight or ten hours and then comes back, and the next day goes back out, comes back in, nothing in that boat, he never lets the fishing net down. That fisherman goes out in that boat and he puts them nets down knowing that one day he's going to catch the fish. And, he, and hopefully it's going to be every day catch a big load. But he knows he's going to catch something. He goes on out there every day, plows on. Every day, lets that net down, gets him fish. 
sometimes plenty, sometimes few. But he remains faithful to his little boat, chug, chug, and goes out there, puts that net down, comes back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What kind of fisherman would it be if he went out there and not put the net down? You'd look at him and say, what is your issue there, fella? How do you expect to catch a fish if you don't put the net down? Got it? You got to put the net down to catch the fish. Listen again what Jesus said, please. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is hand, is at hand. Next, next verse down, 19. And he said unto them, Follow me, I will make you fishers of men. I, Jesus said, I will make you. That's you out there, listener. You, you religious hypocrite that think you're an evangelist, a missionary, some kind of hot shot on the mission field, or you're in the televangelistic circles going around there in, in India and in Europe, throwing all your hot shot signs all over YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, all your promotional stuff. <laughs> when you guys going to wake up that people you're after money you want people to send you money that's all it is with social media they honestly believe the church is so corrupted they believe you got to ask somebody for money so they can keep on rolling yeah. <laughs> It's a sad state of affairs, but that's what it is. 2018 in the so-called Christians. Get money one way or the other. That's all it is, is a money gift. Give me the money. Sad to say, it's what it's all about. As long as your pastor and your associates and your youth leader and your band director, your worship leader get a little, will get a little money every week or every month, they're happy campers. They'll twist the doctor around any way you want it to be as long as you keep giving them money so they can go on their vacation every year, send their kids to college and do everything that the world does. As long as you keep giving them money, they'll say anything you want. And if you don't like what they end up saying, you can farm and get another one in there. You can buy them by the boatload. Jesus said, and he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus will make you fishers of men. Hmm. I wonder how he's going to do that. What is Jesus talking about? You know, anybody with a little bit of sense knows he's talking about that Jesus is saying, I will use you to bring people to my kingdom to become spiritually born again, to be a follower of Jesus. I will make you fishers of men. Who's doing the making here? Jesus. In the New Testament, it states unequivocally, Luke 12, 12, or 12, 2. I have to look, I'm sure. The Holy Spirit will teach you and bring all things to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God will teach teach the followers of Jesus. Okay? Now listen to this again. I, Jesus, will make you fish.
fishers of men. Well, now if you just take a look, all of the disciples, they didn't go to some Bible college. They didn't go to some seminary somewhere and learn anything. You understand? When you're spiritually born again, it's by the power of God. And all you need to do is to listen to the words of Jesus or read the words of Jesus. The Holy Spirit of God will quicken the words to your intellect. Now, Jesus said of his followers, I will make you fishers of men. If your idea of leading the lost to Christ is to give an extra couple dollars in the missionary basket each month, you're not a Christian. If you're going to that church house every week, every week going there the same thing, you're not a Christian. If you sit there and have every missionary from every part of the country and world come through your church trying to beg off some money from you, you're not a Christian. If your life is set upon you working your nine to five job, raising your kids in your neighborhood, your city, you're not a Christian. If you think you just got to pay some money to a preacher man every week and be part of that church group, you're not a Christian. Jesus said of all his followers, I will make you by the Holy Spirit of God fishers of men. You will go forth and lead people from the burning hellfire to the glorious place where there's no pain, suffering, or sorrow, heaven. If that's not your desire to get out there and jerk them people out of hellfire, you're not a follower of Jesus. If your life, your children, your husband, your wife are so important that you can't go forth in the name of Jesus and lead the lost to Christ, you're not a follower of Jesus. You refuse to become a fisher of men as Jesus said he would make you. You're like the fisherman who goes out in the boat and refuses to put the net down in the water and come back in and tell everybody, oh, I'm a good fisherman. Look at my pretty boat. Look at my pretty nets. I dress the part. I look the part. But I actually don't have any fish. Hear me, church? There's some people that are really born again that, that watch what I say. But for the biggest part, you that listen, you're just confused. You have no I earthly idea of how to figure out grace, justification, and repentance. You will go around and around and around in your brain trying to figure out this religious mess, jumping from one hoop to the next trying to figure it out. You're just like the old boy that goes out with that fisherman and he won't let his net down. And another boat, another fishing boat comes by that boat. You jump off that boat and jump on the next boat. And after you're on that boat a little while, you look around and you see that old boy has not put his nets down either. <coughs> so you hang out on that church boat for a while 
and another church boat comes along and you jump ship. You get on that one and you find out you search and their nets aren't down. And then here comes somebody in one of them slick sailboats saying, I got a new way to fish and lead people to Christ in my slick, shiny new sailboat. Come join me. I'm going solo. I'm famous and people want to come and follow me. Jump on my beautiful prosperity sailboat and I'll show you how to lead people to Christ. You jump off, you bail off, you give all to get on this man or this lady's sailboat. Gleaming in prosperity, gleaming in accolades from the world. TVs pro providing all the advertisements of this great, wonderful woman, this great, wonderful man. And you're on this sailboat and you're whining and dining with all the others that have left them nutless boats and jumped on this new, beautiful, new way to get people to Christ. And you look around that new sailboat and you find out they don't even have a net. Don't even have a net. They don't even believe the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament truths of Jesus. They've got their own spin on things. Are you on one of those aimlessly drifting boats called the, the church, TV ministry? You want them old steam freakos? <laughs> I guess I shouldn't say that. But people, you, you just listen to what people say. They're anti-Christ. Antichrist is evil. They do not believe the plain gospel truths that Jesus speaks that you can read. You don't need no interpreter to read to love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. You got people that say, I don't believe these writings of the New Testament, and they say they're a Christian. They don't believe in the atonement of Jesus Christ. They don't believe in the shed blood to take away the sins of mankind. They don't even believe that Jesus was real. <clears throat> That's a Southern Baptist. Evil. Methodist. Evil. 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 Teacher, a sinner. They deny the, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Some of you know what I'm talking about, and others, you're just clueless. Check it out. Grace, justification, and repentance. Grace, God's love. Power, strength, favor to all people. God sent Jesus to save the world. Justification, shed blood of Jesus, allows everyone to come to God. Repentance means to turn your life to obedience to the New Testament truths of Jesus, the apostle and evangelist, not a church. That's what it's all about, cut and dry. Let's go on and read some more of what Jesus says. Not so much what Norman says. Matthew 5, 12. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. <coughs> For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Okay? Your rewards in heaven. I don't know how the... I'm 72. My wife is 71, Selma. And we bought our graveside. Got that all paid for now. 
a little piece of ground in this lovely cemetery. We go out there and look at it. It's really nice. And do you realize that we are both coming to the same conclusion that even though we are blessed, blessed with peace and prosperity in our life from God, I mean prosperity in the sense that the things we have are paid for, <laughs> but we're still considered uh I guess we we're still considered under the poverty line in uh, in the United States. Believe it or not, you got to make a lot of money to get out of that poverty thing. There are untold millions of people that are in worse shape than we are, and we got and our our house is paid for, our cars paid for, everything's paid for. And there's people that don't have nothing. I mean, they're just going paycheck to paycheck and they don't have anything. But we, Sal and I both, are realizing that our real reward is in heaven. And sometimes we sit and we try to figure out what that's going to be like. I just had a thought here as I'm looking at you guys out there. I'm just wondering if I'll recognize. I wonder if Selma and I will be able to hold hands and walk around in heaven. <laughs> I reckon it might give her a little smooch, too. What do you think, huh? Or you think they might have the smooch police up there? What do you think? <laughs> and I'll get somebody to comment. All right. Smooching. Them old people smooching. Let your light, Matthew 5, 16. It's not a New Testament book, Protestant Christian Bible, the only true book. You read any of these other books, you're just going downhill. You read these Christian books and believe them and follow what they say, and you put that into practice, and you start believing what someone else writes, someone else's opinion, you're going down the wrong road. You start believing and be a follower of Norman, you're going down the wrong road. You better get your nose in the book and read yourself. <coughs> Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men. What light's that talking about? That gospel light. But if you're not doing that gospel light, you don't have it. You understand? If your life is not to lead the lost to Christ, if you who do yourself in thinking that you are doing gospel work by building somebody's house, by digging somebody's well, by giving them some food and some clothes, or being a dental doctor or whatever, being a tutor, an English teacher, Bible teacher, if you think your gospel work is anything besides explaining grace, justification, and repentance. If you're not doing it, you don't have that light of the gospel. What you got is that religious light. Go on, join up with that United Nations. They got them, got them, them, <laughs> them do-gooder lights. You want to be a do-gooder? You let like that light shine. Kind of a darkish color. Got a hellfire tint to it light. That's the do-gooder light. That gospel light will blind you by the glorious gospel message. That brings light into darkness. That do-gooder light is going to bring a red tinge onto your life. A tinge of red hellfire. That's what you're bringing to people with your do-gooders. Go to them soup kitchens. Feed them people. Give them clothes. Do everything you want. Educate them. And lead them right down to that path of eternal perdition and hellfire and pain eternally. That's your light. The red tinge of the devil.
the do-gooder light. The old sinner man doesn't realize it. But I'm talking to these so-called Christians that have read that gospel message of salvation, refuse to believe it, and refuse, refuse with their intellect to believe the words of Jesus, the apostle and evangelist, and choose to believe their church doctrines over the words of Jesus, and they know they're contradictory. Know it. There is no doubt it is. Evil. The do-gooder. <clears throat> Let your light so shine before men. The gospel light. That they may see your good works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. What do you think them good works are about? Your good works is your dedication to going each day to the lost and sharing the gospel message of salvation. It's not you going to dig a well. Look at me. I'm a Christian. Look at me. I'm doing these good works. Follow what I do. Be like me, and you can be a good person, too. That's not the gospel light. That's that hellfire orange tent light from the do-gooder religion. Jesus said, Matthew 5.17, Think not I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no ways pass from the law. Hmm. Till all be fulfilled. Whosoever, listen, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. When you study the law, the Old Testament law and prophets, they're talking about one thing, the Messiah coming. Genesis 3.15, God told Adam and Eve that in the future, by the seed of the woman, one was coming to crush the power of evil over humanity. The coming Messiah, which was Jesus. Is your gospel light shining? Is your gospel boat going out? Are you bringing people into the kingdom of God? Is your net got people that are loving Jesus with all their mind, heart, soul, and strength? Are they coming in? Are you leaning over that boat, helping them on into that gospel good news ship? Or are you just sitting on your boat out there floating around with them nets laying right beside you on that deck of that boat? Fooling yourself. Painting your boat. Doing all these boat works around your little boat. That boat being your little church house. All your good little activities for all your little crew members of your little church group. As you float around out in the sea of the lost and damned people of the world and unwilling to throw your gospel net over and lead them to the saving knowledge of Christ, 
because you don't know how to use the nuts to begin with. Therefore, Matthew 5.22, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar. Go thy way, first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. You ever wonder how all the different churches got started, all the Protestant denominational churches? There's over 2,000 Protestant Christian denominations. Baptist, Methodist, Pentecost, all of them. All, any, all of them. You ever figure out how they all got started? We got one Bible, one New Testament. You ever figured out why they're all over? You know, today, the devil inspires people. People are in sin. Their life is evil. All humans are born in sin. And the only way you get out of that sin nature is when the shed blood of the God-man Jesus is applied to your spirit and he supernaturally cleanses your sin life out of you into a new creature in Christ. If your desire is still to sin, you're not saved. If you're one of those people that think you got to sin, you're a flawed human being, you're going to sin all the time, you're not saved. You don't understand the gospel message. That's like taking your old fishing boat out like I've been talking and your net's in one big tangle and you can't even understand how to untangle the net to catch the fish. If you believe you're a sinner, your net is so tangled up, you, you're just useless. You just want to take that boat and turn around. You just want to close down that church house. You're useless. To the gospel message of salvation. These autonomous churches you see in all these communities, go out in your community. I can go walk out of here, and within two minutes, there's a ring of churches. And each one is no more, no less than one rebellious group against another rebellious group. You know what they all say? God led me to do this. God led me to start this church. And you find out that he took out poor them people from that old church where he's at because they weren't happy with that group. They're backstabbing, fighting each other. You understand? They make rules in these churches that you can't, you cannot be so many blocks closer to another one of their churches. Sheep stealing, what they call, it's predominant. There's only so many Christian people. So to get them to leave that church and come to your church, you're going to do something to get them to come. And I'll tell you, anti-Christ spirit runs amok in the Christian churches. Every sinful practice you can think of the churches today want to copy it so the so the kids will come in, the young adults, the young people, the divorcees, they want them to come, the singles, the homosexuals, the transvestites, the old people. They'll create something to draw them to come to their little church. I saw a sign, come, dress any way you want. And at this time, we're going to have the or formal dressing, but if you come at this time, you can wear anything you want. I remember this not too long ago, went to the so-called Christian church here. I was shocked. There was a lady, an obese lady. She was uh, looked about 21 years old. 
as wide as a door. All right? I mean no beast. She was in skin tight gray flannel slacks from her ankles up to her waist. Skin tight, just bobbing over. She had on a t shirt and some ridiculous sign on this t shirt that stood out like neon lights. And being obese, everything above that waistline was just as big. A t-shirt. A man's looking tight fitting t-shirt. Wearing flip-flops. Walking right into that church. They have a twisted, perverted message. They, at that particular so-called Christian church, they have no idea about grace, justification, or repentance. God accepts you no matter who you are, whatever. You don't have to do nothing in your life. Just keep in your mind. Say you love Jesus. Dress, do, go, do anything you want. It's okay because God loves you. That's the message. There's no cleaning up. <laughs> There's no changing in your life. God loves you and God accepts And God is going to forgive everything you're doing. Doesn't make any, he, his grace is so much greater than you because you're a failed, flawed, sinful person. And as long as you're a human, you'll always be sinful. That's the message of the Christian churches here in St. Charles, Missouri. Over and over and over, you hear them tell you, you're a sinner. And they say they're a follower of Jesus who came to this pathetic human mess to save humanity by the blood of Jesus Christ being applied to their spiritual person, becoming a new creature in Christ. All things passed away and everything becomes new as Jesus said it will happen. But they don't believe that. Are you in one of them churches that think you can just do anything you want? You think you're just going to be good for 